Hello and welcome back to Tip TV with me, Matt Brown, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome onto the show Stuart Bladen, who is CEO of Phalax Group PLC. Now, Phalax Group PLC is a cyber security and intelligence firm, so a very current um, company to have on to our CEO interviews, certainly this week with everything going on. But before we get into the news flow that's come out over the recent days with regards to cybersecurity and cyber attacks, Stuart, would you just give us a quick run through about your history, who you are, and how you ended up at Phalax? Yes, sure. And uh, good afternoon, Matt. Nice to meet you. Um, my personal background, I've been involved in major security systems for about 30 years. Uh, I've worked for the government and for the military and more recently uh, for a very large scale American provider. Um, and that's been really interesting. Uh, but for me, uh, of all the things that I've done, including at one point being a nuclear engineer, the most fun thing, the most exciting thing, the toughest thing uh, is the cyber market right now. And that's why I've chosen to come to Phalanx. It's uh, Phalanx Group Limited and our ticket is FLX. Fantastic. So moving on to what's gone on in the news over, over the past few days, major cyber attacks globally. Where does that sit with Phalanx Group and, and how are you as a company reacting to, to what's gone on? Well, the first thing to say is this is by no means a new occurrence. Sadly, we're seeing a regular series and sequence of cyber attacks all the time. Uh, this one hit the news particularly big time because it spread very quickly to over 150 countries uh, and it actually damaged around about 200,000 computers. Um, fortunately over the weekend uh, a flaw within the software was found which has uh, allowed people worldwide in the cyber business to contain it. Um, but what's also true is that we've seen copycat attacks emerge very quickly. We've already seen another couple of variants emerge over the last uh, couple of days. So I think we're going to continue to see things of this nature going forward, unfortunately. And you're working for your clients to protect their businesses. Well, that's right. We've got a wide number of clients, both uh, in financial services and government, uh, and even in uh, significant parts of the NHS. So uh, we've uh, seen clients directly affected uh, by this uh, and have been helping and advising uh, over the last few days. And it's an unfortunate, well, it is unfortunate, these incidents, but in the business you're in, the more cybercrime there is, the, the better for the, the cyber security industry. Well, in one sense that's true of course because uh, a big event like this creates a huge and enormous amount of publicity. You have an immediate group of people who need to address this problem but of course it also tugs on the conscience of everyone else, every board member out there who now has a responsibility mm -hmm. for looking uh, to cyber um, and they, they, it's a big wake-up call. Um, and the other thing I would point to is that the UK government, they've made a couple of big initiatives over the last six months to promote their Cyber Essentials program uh, with the Chancellor Philip Hammond announcing uh, an additional investment of about 1.9 billion towards the end of last year. Um, and then the final thing that I would pick up uh, is a new regulation coming out uh, in 11 months called GDPR. It's going to mean everyone has to report their cyber problems. Mm -hmm. And if you've got it wrong, you can have a pretty big fine. Uh, and that's really focusing people's minds, we find, at the moment. It's called GDPR. And GDPR as well, previously, I think, you, if you had a cyber attack, if it was under 24 hours, it, it didn't need to be reported. I believe now it's... Uh, you have to report so, everything. Uh, under GDPR, everything has to be reported, and you can be fined up to 5% of your global turnover. So it's a big issue if you've got most of your annual profit at stake. That's, that's very interesting, and certainly going forward, that, that will become big for cybersecurity. Yeah. Um, with regards to Phalanx uh, Group Limited, I should say, um, Recent trading statement uh, been floated on the market now for for how long? Well, we've been on the market now for coming up to four years, mm -hmm. uh, and you're good, quite right. We recently uh, we recently came uh, uh, to an uh, um, if you like our um, trading update for the year. So we've mm -hmm. not yet published our full annual results, but I can talk a little bit about what we've said. Um, and we've been experiencing great growth. So year on year, we're up fifty percent. 
Um, and in the two divisions, which are our intelligence division and our cyber division, uh, intelligence has grown organically around about 13%, which is great. Uh, but our cyber business has doubled from the first half to the second half and been making very, very quick inroads into the market. Mm -hmm. And that's really exciting for us. And certainly big kind of you know, front page news with cyber attacks that, that helps the sales of your of your business. But behind the scenes, I, I assume you're you're looking to reach out to new clients and, and new business. As well. I mean, all the time, our clients tend to actually come to us in one of two ways. Mm -hmm. Firstly, there are the hacked, and they usually come very quickly. Uh, they want answers in 24 to 48 hours. They need to be able to tell their customers and their shareholders what's happened, mm -hmm. which means you have to do the forensics. And then, of course, they want to be able to say, it won't happen again because we've done X, Y, Z. Now, the truth is, you can never say, it will never happen yes. again. But what you can do is take the right measures to reduce all your risks. And that's what all responsible companies and organizations now need to do to manage their risks. So it seems as if you're, you're providing the preemptive service, but also pro, proactively reacting to well, that's right. So when problems happen. We will actually go and assess clients, which mm -hmm. is, uh, are they meeting the right standards? We will actually go and hack them. They have right. to sign a bit of paper first, <laughs> of course, and we have a group of ethical hackers that go and do that. You know, we do things called penetration testing. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll even actually, uh, and we've done it for 20,000 people in various government organisations, send out lots of emails trying to get them to give us their credentials to respond to false emails. So why would we do that? Uh, because it allows companies to measure the effectiveness of their staff training, mm -hmm. to see who's still vulnerable, because actually, although you can put in place lots of expensive and technical countermeasures, the weakest link is always your employees, mm -hmm. and you need to provide the training and support. And I would always actually encourage people to think of cyber not so much as a techie problem, but a rounded problem that has a lot of people and human factors in it. Fantastic. So you're actually going into stress testing companies That's using right. ethical hackers and various yeah. means to... And then once you've done that, you find problems, you help clients solve those problems, uh, and then finally they will come to us and we will do 24-hour monitoring of their systems so that we can spot anyone trying to break down the doors. So fantastic. And with regards to the next reporting date, um, one would hope for whatever reasons the, the recent instance would help the company, I understand you can't talk about that before the results are announced, but for, for investors and viewers, what are the key dates they should be looking for? Um, so we're expecting to produce our final accounts towards the end of June, probably, or possibly mm -hmm. the beginning of July. So we've done the trading update, and as every company has to go through, we've got the auditors in right now. I, I literally walked out of the office with them there to come here to talk <laughs> to you. Um, uh, and obviously when they're finished, we'll be able to formally publish uh, all the results. But we have done, I think, a very healthy, strong trading update 50% growth, what's not to like. Exactly. And, and apologies for pulling you away from auditors to, to come and visit us uh, today. It's a pleasure. Yes. So Stuart, we've seen obviously attacks on, on the NHS and that's been news headlines uh, over recent, uh, recent days. Uh, we were talking off air just about how the NHS is, is managing this going forward and, and what, what's your take on this? Um, I think the NHS has come in for some unfair criticism, actually. They have a huge, enormous estate. Most people were able to continue working. Um, it's very easy to criticise them um, with the image of an old PC sitting in the corner that's not been updated uh, and or to criticise the funding as a result. Uh, the truth is that the NHS are amongst the best IT network managers that we've ever come across. They're highly professional. Um, and bluntly, um, when they do spend their resources, they really focused about making sure they deliver clinical benefit and personally I'm pleased that they put the priority on that. Good stuff and uh, just finally you, you mentioned as well off air that you'd actually written a piece about this um, that's right. So uh, we've done two pieces, actually. Mm -hmm. We've done a formal report, um, uh, and that describes what happened with the WannaCry uh, ransomware, mm -hmm. how to recover it, and what some of the learning lessons were. Um, but we've also written, uh, Jay Abbott, our executive director, has many years of experience in the NHS, mm -hmm. and he's written a paper defending the position of the NHS and saying why they shouldn't be criticised. And I would really ask people to go and read that. It's very interesting to get that insight. And that's available on your that's website? It's available on our website and you can go to www.phalanx.com.
www.thepeopleshow.com. Well, viewers, make sure you check that out. And Stuart, thank you so much for coming on today. Your ticker you mentioned was? Our ticker is FLX. Check out the stock and thank you very much for joining us for today's CEO interview on Tip TV.